All right, the project for today is to make a uh, battery dispenser. For years I've wanted to do this, just never got around to it. I use quite a lot of batteries and various things. A lot of them are rechargeables, but mostly the proprietary ones for digital cameras and my uh, wireless uh, security cameras and things like that. Uh, obviously the rechargeable in my mobile phone and so on, but for other things that require batteries, I've generally had better luck using just regular alkaline or lithium batteries. Uh, sometimes that's because the rechargeables often have a different uh, voltage, sometimes a bit lower than an alkaline battery and things don't seem to work quite right or they may have a built-in battery monitor that doesn't behave properly with a rechargeable battery. Various annoyances anyway. I've kind of reverted from using rechargeable double A's and triple A's and things like that to just using regular alkalines for most of that. And uh, I buy them in these packs and um, it's awkward and inconvenient. So there are a lot of uh, different battery dispensers you can see plans for online. Just a series of vertical barriers with the batteries of various sizes stacked up. Normally it's AAA, AA, C, D, and 9 volt. I think I'm going to do something similar. Uh, there are ones where you can stack them more like soda cans, but I think I'm going to prefer the one where they're just stacked on end like this, and then you just pull out uh, the one on the bottom and everything else drops down. And there's some sort of slot usually cut so you can actually get your fingers on either side of the battery to pull the bottom one out. And from the top they just kind of look like this. There's a back board of some sort and a Lexan or plexiglass front panel so you can see what's in there. And uh, the assembly should be pretty simple. So I first need to see whether it's practical to zigzag the batteries. I do use a lot more double A's and triple A's than I do C's, D's, and 9 volts. And to be able to stack at least a couple packs like this uh, in my inventory, which is my goal to have at least one pack like this, plus whatever's left over from the last one. Um, I want to be able to store at least that many in there, and it may make sense in some instances to kind of zigzag the batteries a little bit in there. And I want to see what the ideal dimensions are for these channels, their height and their width, before I go out and start cutting wood. Since the uh, AAAs usually come in packs of either 16 or 20, and I could potentially have up to two packs of 20 in here at any time, uh, I want to make sure that it's designed to hold 40 AAAs, and the AA's usually come in packs of 16, I want to be able to hold two of those, so 32. And then whatever number of C and D cells and 9 volt batteries uh, it ends up holding at those dimensions is uh, what I'll plan on the capacity being. I use much fewer of the C's, D's, and 9 volts. So my calculations say that uh, a AAA is 0.4 inches diameter a AA is 0.55 and a 9 volt is 0.67 thick. Uh, the quantities I'm after ends up with a 16 inch height for the AAA's, uh, 17.6 for the AA's, and 8 inches high for the uh, 9 volts. Um, so here's 17 and a half. And that's not a horrible dimension, but I would like it to be closer to a foot high. That'd be a, a nicer profile. So I think I will try to zigzag the double A's and triple A's to get them into a, um, a height of closer to one foot for the entire assembly. So I built a temporary lash up in my bench vise, um, experimenting with different widths that would get me approximately a foot high for the assembly to hold 40 triple A's and this one here works out with 10 cells to be about three and an eighth inch which works out to about 12 and a half inches for um, <clears throat> 40 of them and
if I pull one out. They all feed down pretty nicely. So there's no problem with them binding. I think that's a good distance. And it ends up being 11 sixteenths between boards. 11 sixteenths. And for the double A's, um, it seems like empirically it works out pretty well with a spacing of 15 sixteenths, which gives me about 12 and 3 quarters inch total height. feeding pretty well with that spacing. Okay, I've empirically settled on uh, overall height for this at uh, 13 inches and the triple A's, uh, if I put 40 them in it should be approximately 12 and a half inches to do that and um, for the double A's <coughs> 32 of them should be about 12.75. The 9 volts, if I put a dozen in, will only be 8 inches. And the C cells at 1 inch diameter, I can get 12 of them in there. And uh, the D cells with 1.3 inch diameter, I can get uh, 8 of them in there. So uh, I just need to work out the final dimensions now. Well, just with the wood I have laying around, I've got some of this craft plywood, which is the poor man's aircraft plywood. It's a nicer grade with more plies than the usual stuff you'd get in a hardware store or uh, a lower end lumber yard. And um, I do buy this stuff in small pieces at the local Ace Hardware over in their craft and model section. They're always careful to say, it's craft plywood, no aircraft use. Um, I'm not sure if the wood itself is just not quite as good a cut, or if maybe the adhesive is not quite rated or what, but it's very similar to aircraft plywood. It's a nice stuff to work with. Anyway, um, this is a six millimeter thick piece, which should make a decent backboard for the assembly. And, uh, not too different in appearance and tone is um, some scrap um, poplar um, hardwood, sort of a hardwood, uh, pieces I have laying around from another project. And these are three quarters of an inch. And if I resaw those, I can get two um, three-eighths of an inch thick pieces, which should be a good width for the dividing uh, bars on this assembly. Obviously, it'll be slightly less than that because um, the resawing will take out a little bit in the middle. So with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, vertical bars at three-eighths inch each, which is 0.375 inches, and then a triple A channel at 11 sixteenths, a double A channel at 15 sixteenths, a C channel at 1 and an eighth, a D channel at 1 and 3 eighths, a 9 volt at 1 and an eighth, and in the case of the ones that aren't zigzagged, which is more forgiving, the C's, D's, and 9 volts, I've added um, about an eighth of an inch to the actual width of the battery, so I have a 1 16th inch clearance on each side this prevents any chance of them binding up in there if the woodwork isn't exactly right or anything like that. Maybe a battery has a slight bulge or something. I didn't want to have any binding, so I've opened them up slightly. So I just need to add these dimensions up. And conveniently that all adds up to seven and a half inches, not too bad a dimension. So the overall thing is going to be 13 inches high by seven and a half inches wide and I just need to figure out a good depth now. Uh, 
So with the various battery lengths of one and three quarter, two inch, two inch, two and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and giving it a one eighth of an inch length clearance, again to prevent binding or slight variations, I'm going to need spacers between the dividers for four of the rows. I'm going to need a half inch spacer behind the nine volts, a .375 or 3 8 inch spacer behind the C's and double A's and a .625 or 5 8 um, spacer behind the triple A's. So I need to allow enough wood for that and I've realized that even though I naively and carelessly assumed that these strips of pop poplar I had were going to be an adequate space I'd have to butt glue them together and plane them and it's going to be a lot more work than it's worth have to go to the Home Depot anyway. I'm just going to pick up a piece of wider board that I can then cut down to the desired uh, dimension. I think I'm also going to put a top on this. This is uh, something that the other designs I've seen don't have. Um, I'm probably going to have this in my wood shop so there's going to be a lot of sawdust in the air and these slots could fill up with sawdust. So I'm thinking that I'm going to put a hinged top on it. It's not going to be all that fancy, but it'll just be another piece of the plywood, backing type plywood, laid on the top with a couple of small uh, hinges so it, and an overhang so it can be easily grabbed and flipped up to um, add more batteries. Okay, I've got a piece of uh, the so-called select pine, which is just a nice straight uh, essentially not free piece of uh, pine wood and uh, it's a three-quarter inch exactly thickness three and a half inches wide and about eight feet long I need six and a half feet for all the vertical pieces so the first thing I'm going to do is basically cut this to size first thing to do is to cut it to uh, two and a half inches wide instead of three inches wide so I'm just going to rip that on the table saw and here it is ripped down to two and a half inches wide the uh, next thing I'm going to do is just cut it to length 13 inch lengths and then I'm going to resaw it to get approximately the desired thickness and all the pieces are cut down to 13 inches long, two and a half wide, and now I just have to get the thickness right. Since I wanted three eighths of an inch, but these are three quarters of an inch, anything I cut off is going to make one of them smaller than the desired three eighths of an inch. Uh, but I always have tons of room in my shop for various pieces of scrap wood I can use for other projects, so I don't mind cutting them this way. I'm not actually wasting the wood and the tool I have for doing this the best is my bandsaw, so I'm going to use that to resaw these, in other words, to cut them lengthwise like this. Um, <clears throat> I could use the table saw for this by making a couple of cuts from opposite sides. I'm going to cut them oversize anyway and plane them down, or I could sand them, but since I have a planer I'm going to use that. Uh, so I'm going to cut them a little bigger to start with and then plane them to get rid of the roughness on the cut side. So that would work if I was using the table saw or any number of sawing techniques, but the bandsaw will be used here. Okay, I don't really have a resaw fence for this table saw, but uh, I'm cutting a piece that's only slightly taller than the normal fence, so that'll work for resawing. And uh, I'm going to cut it with three-eighths of an inch on the left, and just a hair more than that, but... Uh, 32nd of an inch just so I can plane it down and get rid of any uh, cut marks from the blade and then I'll have the remaining part that I can use for other projects.
and now I have the pieces in their resawn form. There is a, a slight set of cut marks on one side, the other side smooth. So I'm going to run these through the planer and take them down just a hair. Uh, I could also sand them, um, but I think the planer will be faster and easier. <laughs> Okay, all the vertical pieces are now cut to size. 13 inches tall, 2.5 inches wide, and 3 eighths of an inch thick. They're planed to be smooth on both sides. I don't even read, really need to sand them for this application. Um, once they have a little varnish on them, it'll be good enough for this situation. And now to cut my piece of 6 millimeter plywood which is for all intents and purposes a uh, quarter inch piece of plywood. I'm going to cut it by 13 and then flip it around and cut it by 7.5. Okay, 7.5 by 13 inch piece of quarter inch plywood and the piece of 7.5 by 13 inch uh, plexiglass that I had the hardware store cut for me this morning. And obviously they're the same size, so that's great. And I've also made two seven and a half inch wide pieces for the top and bottom. The bottom is just two and a half inches from here to here, and this one has an extra uh, quarter inch overhang to uh, allow gripping it to flip it up on the top. So I've got the top and bottom edges marked for the rails. Those will sit up there pretty nice. They're all uh, square enough that I shouldn't have to mess with them much to when I'm gluing them. You well, know, the next task for wood cutting is to take a uh, remaining piece of my three and a half by three quarter uh, pine board and cut it down to make the spacer strips that will go into several of the channels. So I've just cut it off to length on the table saw and I'm going to use the band saw to cut it into strips in the requisite widths. And so here are the spacers for AAA, AA, C, none's required for D, and for the 9 volt. And they just lay in the channels between the spacers like that. And before gluing, doing a sanity check to make sure the spacings are right. I've got plenty of space for the zigzag on the AAA and AA. Just about a sixteenth of an inch clearance on each side of the C. 
and the D and the 9 volt and they all end up pretty close to the same height and here certainly they're none of them gonna hit the front of it hey these silver bars almost all line up okay everything's glued up except for the one place where I screwed up and let the piece shift while I was setting all the other ones up that's a small blemish that I'm willing to live with and uh, since I don't have any clamps that are the right size I'm just letting gravity do its work here this doesn't need to be super strong the glue will set up nice and hard and it'll be plenty solid just the way it is so I have to give that a few hours and then I can work on the rest of it well I cleverly forgot a step before I glued it up I was going to cut out a uh, notch in all the verticals so there's a place to reach in and grab the batteries to pull them out now that I've glued it up it's going to be more of a pain to do that but I can still do it on the bandsaw because I've got the riser kit on my bandsaw and I should just be able to cut through everything right here see how that goes so I've pre-drilled the holes for the hinges on the back okay so here is the cover the hinges are a little funky from this angle but it does work and the lid doesn't come back any further than the back of the dispenser so it's not going to hit the wall if it's mounted on a wall and uh, after the extra sixteenth of an inch of plexiglass here there's still enough of a lip to grab it and swing it up and so I've given it a coat of polyurethane varnish and uh, I've got my reciprocating heater fans going it'll keep it about 70 degrees in this area overnight should be ready for the final steps tomorrow morning all right so it's all varnish now just one coat of varnish that's good enough for this um, the top lid goes up accessing the batteries I do have a blemish here where um, I actually found after I did the hinges that they were just a little tight up here and I decided to run the plywood through my planer and just take a hair off the outer laminate but it gouged a little bit and actually went through to the next layer luckily it's on the bottom my first thought was to buy some picture hangers and attach them to the back of this to hang it on the wall if I decided to do that instead of just sitting it on a shelf I still don't know how I'm gonna mount this uh, but I decided right now I'm going to put a couple of holes in the back in case I do want to anchor it to a wall with some wood screws so I just placed a couple of marks here to go in um, and I'm going to countersink them from the other side for a standard wood screw of some sort probably not one this long but probably about this size and uh, I checked to make sure that these holes aren't going to come through into some inaccessible place inside the uh, the front of the the assembly and uh, because of how close these holes are to one of the dividers I'm just going to use a large drill bit to countersink for the wood screw heads. Any of my other countersinking tools are too wide to go into this particular location. And so I've got my holes countersunk and I put them in a little deep too just to make sure that the heads can't hit the uh, back of the batteries. And so that's how the wood screw goes in should I need to do that. To attach the plexiglass to the front I've decided to put three columns of screws in, one roughly centered and uh, on the outer panels and then three from top to bottom for a total of nine. And I've got these little wood screws here, actually they're sheet metal screws 
that'll uh, work well for this. So I've got my uh, pilot hole for the threaded part and my clearance hole to go through the plexiglass. Okay, so I've drilled the holes in the acrylic or Lexan or plexiglass, whatever the hardware store gave me, and the pilot holes in the wood. And everything looks like it's lining up good, as it should, as I drilled everything straight through. Just got to put the screws in now. And there's the finished product. And here is the uh, battery holder with more or less half of its capacity. I do find with the um, batteries in the two left columns with the zigzag pattern that when I've tested it with a full load of batteries on it, actually only half this high, there is a little bit of stick friction on the side rails and sometimes the batteries won't drop instantly when pulling one out of the bottom and if I just tap it on the side that usually has caused them to drop and if I need to, you know, wrap it on the top or something a little bit that has caused them to, to drop down. So that's a consideration if you're going to build something like this. You might decide you want a little less capacity and just do a straight column that would avoid that issue, uh, but it does work that way. The other thing I've noticed is that there seems to be a very small difference in the diameters of these batteries. As near as I can measure it, my rails are straight parallel but I found that these smaller batteries in the zigzag pattern tend to stack with their uh, the bottom side or the back side slightly higher and that accumulates an angle which is why I have not loaded them any more than this because they would really get going at a weird angle uh, that was not an anticipated thing and I didn't discover that in my tests because I only did a few batteries so again if I was doing this again I would probably just use a straight column of batteries instead of a magazine load like this but it still works this way it's just not quite as ideal as I'd hoped and if any of these top loading battery holders storage devices whether they're the kind that they go in like uh, cans in a soda dispensing machine or whether they go in magazine loaded or any of the different orientations uh, you're loading them from the top and they're going to drop, so you want to be gentle about it. It probably doesn't do the batteries any good to drop a long distance. Um, when I loaded this up, I actually kind of rolled them in. I held it at, a, at an angle and kind of rolled them in. Uh, but that had the result of them often flipping over. And you can see some batteries that went in uh, the other way, which is not a problem. Uh, and if you have this bolted to the wall, you're not going to be able to do that for reloading. This is heavy enough where there's absolutely no problem. I don't actually think I will bolt it to a wall. I'll just let it sit on the shelf somewhere and it'll be fine. And that does allow me to take it out and, you know, jiggle it a little bit or whatever. And another consideration is I'm glad that I left a little extra clearance front to back on these because under certain conditions if a battery goes in a certain way it could bind up a little bit more and having that slight extra clearance I think I had uh, you know better part of an eighth of an inch clearance front to rear uh, that just helps the situation by preventing them from uh, jamming up at an angle I still don't know whether I got Lexan or Plexiglass on this Modern Lexan is so optically clear, it looks like plexiglass. I did not smell the usual plexiglass acrylic smell when I was uh, cutting and drilling this, so I'm thinking it was just Lexan. Uh, 
but that's fine and it's actually easier to machine in some ways because it doesn't shatter so easily like uh, regular plexiglass would. So any more thoughts on this? I don't think so. This is the way I built mine and it seems to work. Oh, one more thought. I made this little stick. It's a couple inches taller than the whole assembly and I found that was useful sometimes to just go in here and tamp down the um, magazine loaded ones if they were binding up funny. 